In this video, we're going to talk about operators. We've already covered operators inside of our tutorial so far, but in this video, we're going to cover it in much more depth. So we're going to go through all of the most common operators that you're going to use inside of WIST. Now, note that WIST uses all of the JavaScript operators and the ones that we won't cover in this video can also be used inside of WIST. So you can just search for them online. But let's start now with the most basic operators. Operators can be used inside of logic blocks. So if we open our logic block with these squiggly brackets, we can start using our operators. The easiest operators to use are arithmetic operators, and you can use those to perform mathematical operations. So for example, you can write one plus one inside of our logic component, and as the output, we're gonna see two. You can do the same thing with other mathematical operators. You can use division, you can use multiplication, and you can use subtraction. Now note that with the plus sign, you can also concatenate two strings. So for example, if we have some text like hello, and then we write plus name, we're going to get hello name. Of course, we would add a space here. And you could do the same thing with the fields from your request response. So for example, we can write hello, add a space here, plus, and here we can just select the full name. So we get hello hates cliff jumper, which is the current user's name. Next, we have comparison operators. And probably one that you already encountered is equals, 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 or strict equals. Now, what is a strict equal and how does this work? So let's write here, for example, 10. And we can't just write 10 equals 10 because this is not a comparison operator. This is just setting the value of the first value, which is a little bit confusing. I'm not going to go into that. But we basically have to write either equals equals and then this is going to evaluate to true, or we can use the strict operator, which I mentioned earlier, which is equals, equals, equals. Now, what's the difference between equals, equals, and equals, equals, equals? Well, if we have this operator only equals, equals, the values can be also of a different type. So let's say here we can have a string, and on the left hand side, we can have a number. And basically, since the value inside is the same, this is going to evaluate to true. But if we want to ensure that both the type and the value are the same, then we would have to write equals equals equals. And this will say false because this is a number and this is a string. So if we change this to a number, we can see that it's true. Now, if you wanted to check the opposite, then you would write here exclamation mark. And now if those are different, it's going to evaluate to true. So for example, if we have 10, it's going to evaluate to false because these are equal, not not equal. And if we change something, then we're going to get true because these values are not equal. Now, this is a strict not equals comparison. We can also use a regular not equals comparison like so. And this will also take in account if the value is not the same. So we can write something like this and then we're going to get false. If on the other hand, if on the other hand, we have a strict operator, this is going to be true. All right. Now we have also greater than and smaller than which we can use inside of our logical operators. So for example, we can write something like this. Or we could write 50 and then it's going to change to true. Same thing with greater than. If we write 10 is greater than 50, we're going to see that the Boolean evaluates to false. But if we write 10 is greater than 9, we're going to see that it evaluates to true. Note that we can also use greater or equals to to another number. So for example, we can write 10 is greater than 10. We can see it's false. But if we write greater or equal to 10, we're going to see true. Now, we can also invert that statement and check if it's smaller or equal to 10. Next, we have logical operators. And here I'm going to use a Boolean just to show whether things are true or false. And here inside of this Boolean, I'm going to basically write what I wanted to show you. So we're going to cover logical operators. The first logical operator, which you probably saw is the OR operator. So for example, we could check whether this full name equals 
John Doe or hates cliff jumper. And we can see that it's true. So if the user is called John Doe, this condition will evaluate to true. Or if the user is called hates cliff jumper, this condition will evaluate to true. In this case, we have hates cliff jumper over here. Now you could chain as many of these operators as you want. You could write here a third name, a fourth name, etc. Then we have the AND operator. Now the AND operator has to ensure that both values are correct. So for example, we can check if our user is hates cliff jumper and if he added an address. We can see here that he forgot an address, but we're going to click that. So we're going to get false because this is not going to evaluate to true because one of these is false. If we change this to an OR operator, then it's going to be true because only one of these two conditions is true. And of course, you could also invert a value. So for example, full name is set. And this is by default true. But if you add an exclamation mark in front, it's going to invert the Boolean. So for example, if you write false, like so, it's going to be false, obviously, but if you add an exclamation mark before, it's going to invert it. Understanding that you have the possibility of inverting a value is really useful when you're writing conditional statements. Next, we have the ternary operator. And the ternary operator is the only operator that gets three different values. So we have a condition which has to be either a truthy or a falsy value, which will evaluate to true or false. Like so, let's say status code 200. So this is the condition. So we have to check if status code really is 200. And then we add a question mark and we write what happens if this value is truthy, meaning if the status code is 200. And here, let's say we write hello, and then we add a name. And then we write colon, and then we write what happens if this is false. So if the status code didn't equal 200, meaning if the request wasn't successful, we're going to do this second thing. And here we can just write hi user. So we can see here we have hello hates cliff jumper because this is true and otherwise we're going to have hi user. So for example, if we change this to false, we're going to see hi user. Now, normally you would probably check whether the name was provided or if it's an empty string. So in this case, you would check if full name was provided and then you will write hello full name. Otherwise, you will just write hi user. And of course, inside of ternary operators, you can also use logical operators. So you could, for example, check whether the name of the currently logged in user is actually hates cliff jumper. So you could write here if name equals hates cliff jumper, write hello hates cliff jumper. Otherwise, you can write hi normal person. So if the user's name is anything else, let's say we invert this value right now, we will get hi normal person. And these were probably all of the operators that you're going to use inside of your WIST application. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about conditional statements in more depth. Cheers!